Hi there, Christian Henson here. This time last year, Make Music Day, I was here. And I'd just stolen a wine glass from my hotel room in Shibuya, I think that's how you pronounce it, Tokyo, Japan, in order to prove a point that if you want to make music with these things, computers, the most important thing to buy after the computer is not plugins or virtual instruments or sample libraries, it is in fact one of these. I think it was John Cage, composer, 1960s, the guy who did 4 minutes 33, the piece that has 4 minutes 33 seconds of total silence, that said that music is just noise that's been organised. And the way I like to organise noise is through sampling. I believe that sampling will set you free as a composer, as a producer. So I thought for this year's Make Music Day, we could make noise, make samples, and then make some music. But indeed, this time in the slightly more quarantine-appropriate setting of my kitchen, one of my favourite places to find stuff to make noise with. The other thing I think that's fascinating about sampling is it's a great way to tune your ears. And I think probably one of the first lessons to learn when trying to find something to sample is a thing called the fundamental. The thing that gives something a note is the fundamental. And it's a flashy word for what is basically the loudest audible tone that an object gives. Now don't worry if you don't have a microphone to join in on this because we're all, well let's face it, we're all hot mics aren't we? We've all got microphones in our smartphones. So I'm going to make an instrument today using this and then if you go away, make some noise, grab it on your, your device, I'll show you tomorrow how to turn it into an instrument. So back to the fundamental. Fundamental error I used to make when finding stuff to sample was to be lured in by an interesting sound. But where is the note? There's two notes in there. Right, before a lot of you scamper to your keyboards to go, nope, that's not what a fundamental is. Uh, I've just checked. I believe the definition is, is the lowest note within uh, an instrument. But does that really mean the kind of subharmonics? Are they fundamentals? The, the top one is actually an octave above, but I'm not going to attempt to sing up there. The lower note would be the fundamental. So if we take a couple of sine waves, let's have a look at that. Thereabouts, you can actually see the two pitches there. I believe this would be the fundamental, this one here. Now the problem with these complex sounds is, I don't know, it's similar to if you've ever dialed up a, a synth patch and it's really beguiled you. Well that's largely because there's an interesting interval in there, which is interesting in its own right, but the minute you start trying to write with it... it becomes less obedient, it's leading you. The synth tail is wagging the dog. Now, one of the keys to organisation, particularly with noise, is that the noise is obedient. Now, how about something like this? One of the best sounds to get out of a wine glass is to actually pinch it with your nail. So it doesn't have that tappy-tappy and it's kind of quite pure sounding. So that's good. But I found this, which actually I, I sampled years ago. I would say it's slightly more boring sounding, but it's got a really clear fundamental, that main note. Now, another tip I learnt from a percussionist was, I don't know if you can see, but this is filthy. And if stuff is covered in kind of scale or dust, it won't resonate as well. So I'm first going to kind of clean this up good and proper. So there's a little sticker there as well. That's not just not going to help the resonance. And if any of you recorded with a band, you often dampen a snare by sticking some tape on it. It'll just stop the resonant qualities of it. Right, let's give it a really good polish. Let's have a listen to that. Now, if I were to hit it with something like this, there's a that I think again is going to really get in the way of our sound. Something like this. It's just too tinny. I like the carrot. It's just a little bit awkward playing with the carrot. There isn't enough kind of length on it, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is just improvise the beater, my carrot beater.
That's interesting, my ring, my wedding ring is actually making an octave partial above the, uh, the, the fundamental. Yeah, this is great. Now the thing with using a microphone is it's not the instrument that's making the noise. The instrument is moving the air around it and that's what is the noise. So if you don't record the air, you're not going to get the noise. Now in an environment like this, a, a dodgy kitchen, um, there's going to be lots of surrounding noise and indeed the ambience of the room. So you do want to eradicate that as, as much as possible. But one of the real errors I hear with a lot of home recordings is people close miking but too close, like miking the instrument, not the air around it. So I'm going to give just, I don't know, what is that, half a foot distance there should be uh, enough. And I'm going to record the air around it. I'm not going to record the carrot, I'm not going to record the glass, I'm going to record the air that's emitting from it. And that really is it. Now for you sample veterans, there's something for you too. So just bear with me one sec. But if this is your first time making a sample instrument, check back with me tomorrow and I'm going to show you how to turn it into an instrument in EXS, Contact or SFZ, Sports Zando, which is the free sampling platform. If you're feeling slightly more adventurous, there's something that we can do, it's not massively complicated, that will make your instrument sound even more realistic and I imagine probably more beautiful. This is a thing called velocity layers. So it's several samples that get gradually louder. And if, as I mentioned, you're a sample veteran, I really do recommend you taking part because tomorrow I'm gonna to show you how to build one of these instruments, a multi-sampled instrument with velocity layers in less than five clicks. But for this, I'm going to need to get out the pouch. It's the first time I've tried this. This is a, a little portable mic thing from Sure. Not, uh, not sponsored by them or anything. OK, so if you want to do this slightly more advanced view version, I can't, this is literally carrot and stick, then let's do a fixed number of uh, velocity layers. It's really important we do the same number for reasons that I'll get into tomorrow. So let's make it 10. Just got to measure your performance so you get an even line of velocity layers between that quietest point and the loudest point. So here we go. Right, so I think we need to concentrate on the lower velocities and you probably would have noticed that I'm totally overloading my uh, phone as well. Uh, on the audio app, which is the Sure app, there is a, a gain setting and I'm going to make sure now that the headroom is correct so I'm not overloading it, but also that there's no compressors or limiters on which will colour the sound. So let's have another go. So come back tomorrow, same time, same place, and do film and share with us your efforts. We'll spread what you've been up to around our social media network, hashtag SpitfireMMD2020. Do subscribe if you haven't done already and ding that bell to be notified when we put the next video up when I'm going to show you how to turn these things into instruments and for your slightly more adventurous and experienced souls, a way of building samples incredibly quickly. Thanks for watching and thanks in advance for taking part.